I think it's quite daunting, really, when you first when you first start in an operating theatre. I'm a nurse by background, and when I first qualified, my first job was in the operating theatres. And there was no formal training or simulation or anything. I had to learn on the job. So, yeah, I was terrified. Down here, I next it can be quite difficult, especially for new um, nurses or ODPs. There's quite a lot of um, boundaries that have to be overcome before you can um, work together as a team, really. This study considers communication issues in operating theatres. It addresses a key challenge for the National Health Service by investigating professional communication in transient teams. That is, teams that may only exist for the duration of the task. The reason why we're here today at a university um, that trains up um, our next generation nurses and operation uh, department practitioners is to support the nurses in preparing themselves to, to be effective communicators. So There's no point saying the same thing twice and you know that they don't understand it. There are a number of significant changes that have taken place. There's people coming to London to work from all over the world. There are also changes in the way in which um, the National Health Service organises work. If you're a, a theatre nurse, you should be able to assist in any operation. That's what they're striving towards. And there are, of course, also all sorts of technological changes. Surgical work has become more complex. And so all of those changes have an effect on the communication. And that's really what we wanted to uh, investigate. I have never been in the operating theatre before. So I went there with completely open eyes. One swab is out. Can a suction, please? Two is out, three is out. Why is the sucker not working, please? I was surprised also like how, how well they do work as a team, but then also how some of the communication issues are really to do with something very routine-like or mundane, like responding to a question. Um, they're very often overlooked, so um, I suppose my role was to really fish out those those moments and kind of build a collection of cases where it's reoccurring. Both scenarios didn't respond to say, I'm coming, I'm just looking for it. You just kept looking and looking. And the only time you responded was when the scrub nurse said, free o -vicral. You responded to the scrub nurse. It's like you, were, you couldn't respond to the surgeon. Certain contextual factors may have a particular effect on communication. We've talked about music, for instance, today. I've got your favourite song. One. Yeah? <laughs> um, can we check in tonight? Okay. Sorry, is that okay to check in? We've actually counted uh, how many times um, there are problems of communication in a context where music is being played and in context where music is not being played. It turns out that in fact there are actually more problems of communication occurring uh, where music is being played. So these are important findings, we believe, that we want to share with the people that we've been observing. We did video recordings over about five months. We used wide-angle cameras, um, which enabled us to kind of capture the whole theatre and everyone who was working in it. So we were not just focusing on, say, on a surgeon, but rather on the whole team. I think if you want to relay this back to the healthcare professionals, you need to have some concrete stuff there to show them. I think you can explain things to people, but people think you're generalising and actually being able to show them concrete, and people love that as well, to be able to actually see what's happening. You get a lot of sort of research based on reports of what people say is happening, and very few people actually back that up with uh, observations, and that's what we're trying to do. A lot of the communication that has been done in theatre has focused on anaesthetists and surgeons and nurses and ODPs tend to be just on the periphery of that so I think um, this is really really important. This, this having to ask for something you know the surgeon asks the scrub nurse and the scrub nurse asks somebody else the circulator the circulator should know what's happening on that trolley as much as anybody else. Because in the past I know that it, you did have to talk through the scrub nurse because that was the kind of hierarchy and the surgeon wouldn't talk to anyone unless it was by the scrub nurse, but I thought that was dampened to stop communication failures. So. Communication in the past hasn't had enough attention, but I think people are realising that it's a, a cheap and cost-effective way to improve mortality rates, morbidity rates and just overall uh, you know, even operating time, if everything runs smoothly. 
can finish the operation quicker, you can do more lists. So I think that people are looking to it a lot more and it is important. I think people know that they are going to have to evolve and it's being encouraged by those guys that are coming through at this moment in time and the consultants and the surgeons and I think that culture is, is changing. What we've learned is uh, that surgeons can have numerous names for any old instrument. So even you were bringing it up that if you're a student and also you're new, any, potentially anything could be new to you. So you as a scrub nurse, you'll be thinking, oh, I don't know what this instrument is. Can I ask the surgeon? I don't think so. Because you'll feel quite nervous. awkward and embarrassed at, at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, the simulation that we sort of run today and the, 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 the learning is unbelievable. Where we have education days at hospital where we, the whole team will learn, something like this being brought in to the team would be fantastic.